All right, let's take a look at this open. So that's the final product we're going to fabricate uh, in Electric VSI. And um, we don't have a, there's no schedule with MOSIS for, C, uh, for the C5 fabrication this year, uh, uh, but we can get our trip done and uh, get a, a GDS2 files ready in our hard drive. And whenever uh, one, the opportunity uh, pops up, we can submit the design to MOSIS and get fabricated. So. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's try to understand this open first. It's not that easy. Uh, for simulation, it's a bit better, but for layout, it really takes a lot of time to get this done. And uh, uh, you need to make sure you need to know that this chip here, only this area, including from here, if you draw a line here, here, if you do snipping tools, and it's more clear. Only this part is inside the chip. So this is inside. And this is outside. Uh, you must be wondering, so uh, we purchased the commercial pumps and there's not such this thing to bias your entire circuit, right? Uh, so the, the thing is we want to simplify the design a little bit so we don't have the self-start biasing circuit we don't have it so that's why we have to bias it off the off the chip so this is a resistor we're going to add to a one to a pin of the chip trying to bias your current mirror over here for the differential power okay so this is something you need to understand save it the desktop all right um that's the one thing you need to know another thing so that's a bias circuit biasing circuit to bias these two current mirrors and that's a differential pair and that's a final stage for the gain it's a gain stage uh, you can see that the width for these transistors are actually huge compared to the previous ones. This is 6.6 .6 micro, micron, and which is about 22 times, 22 times uh, the scale, which is 300 nanometers in electric VLSI, right? Is that clear? Let me probably write it here. So 6.6 .6 micron or micrometer equals to 22 times uh, 300 nanometer, right? So when you are sizing your uh, uh, transistor in the electric device RIT device, you want to use this value instead of this value in, um, no, in, in electric. Electric is using scales, but uh, uh, LT spice using this. This is LT spice. this is electric VSI. Just want to make it clear, okay? And um, this is a hundred. Uh, so this is uh, twenty-two. This is two hundred twenty. This is a uh, hundred. A hundred, right? And this is two. This is two. So we keep the lens to be the smallest uh, dimension can be fabricated in the C five. Um, so we have a faster circuit. It's not taking too much space on the chip. So that's one thing you need to know. That's a gain stage. Uh, why are you, when you are using a wider transistor, are getting a larger gain, right? So remember that. Um, <clears throat> a wider device. So that's the first thing you need to know. And second thing, a wider device means a larger current. Right, a larger current means a larger GM. A larger GM means means what? Because GM VGS equals to the current. Okay, if you have a larger GM, G VGS is a signal, right? You cannot change it, so we get a larger ID. A larger ID. It's an AC ID, a larger ID times whatever the gain is of the op-amp 
you are getting a larger VL. So this is being used to increase the gain of the open. So what gain, right? Open loop gain or closed loop gain? So when VL is larger, your open loop gain is larger. Right, so that's the uh, original gain of the OPAMP. That's a, one of the parameters of OPAMP. So the reason is open loop gain is because you don't even have a closed loop yet. And we're going to do a simulation regarding that later. You haven't used this, you haven't configured your OPAMP into a closed loop configuration in order to amplify a signal in a small range. But now we, we hope our open loop gain to be as larger as possible, as large as possible. Why? Because if you got a larger open loop gain, when you are doing a negative feedback, remember that? When you are doing a negative feedback, you can guarantee that VP, VM, they are equal. So now we get the story back. To the whatever we just learned in the earlier time in the uh, in the semester, so this is critical. Keep in mind, you know, you understand what's going on here. Okay. <clears throat> save, save all these images for you guys, so we are not losing anything. <clears throat> <laughs> so now we understand why we have a gain stage and how this can increase the gain, right? Um, and if you want to look at the small signal model for this part, uh, how that works, uh, watch the lecture video on Monday. I think it is. Take a look. Wait, where is that one? I think it is in here. Yeah. This one. Differential amplifiers, April the 13th. Okay, uh, watch this video and look at the notes so understand uh, how do you derive the AC gain for that gain stage. So this is the original output from the differential pair. Okay, and that one doesn't have a super high gain, so when I amplify the signal further by this gain stage, we are getting a larger gain. So this is the final output of the op amp. If we draw this, okay, and you should know that this is VM, this is VP, this is V out. And if you draw a symbol out of it, and we are not doing that, but if you are doing that, so that's V out, that's VM, that's VP, right? That clear so that's a vdd of course and that's the ground so these are these are the ground things number three <clears throat> so the biasing uh voltages i think we covered that in the uh, current meter ser lecture series uh, but this part looks weird, right? So it's not one uh, cascading current mirror and Moses, but it's it has two uh, split uh, branches. And how that works? So now let's explain that to you. Let me draw it for you. And why that works? So we know that we need a a current mirror load for to convert the uh, AC voltage, AC current into AC voltage, into AC voltage. And these are the two inputs of the op amp. And here's a differential pair. Here's VDD. And you need this one. And originally, the very, our very the earliest version is we use a current source as a tail current. But now we have to make it practical since we're designing the chip, so we're not using this guy anymore. Instead, we're using a cast coding current mirror, right? So it has to be this. And you want to bias it using your biasing circuit. We just 
you know, write a name here. And by designing a different uh, width for each MOS, you can get a different current being mirrored. You can scale the current being mirrored into this current source, right? So for example, we need this. Okay, and in the same way, you don't have to do it in this way, and you can do it in another way. So alternatively, in the schematic, you can you can make two branches, and with uh, with the one time one time of the width over here, and sh short the gate and drain together, and you are literally making the same circuit. You are making a two times of the same width, at uh from from the from the one time width transistor. And so this one is actually equivalent to something like this. All right, no difference. So for all of them, they are just one time W over L. It's the same effect. Okay, it doesn't matter how you do it, but this just looks more symmetric. That's why people sometimes, you know, they are used to do this, uh, but uh, actually it doesn't matter at all. And this is VM, this is VP. And you are one, you must be wondering why, how do you know that, right? So why this is a, why this is an inverting terminal, why this is a non-inverting terminal, and why this is V out, right? So the reason for that is the V out has has a uh, 180 degree phase shift compared to this guy, you know, because they are opposite to each other. So that's why this is VM, and this VP and V out they are in the same phase. So that's why it is uh, um, they are in the same phase. So this is VP, not VM, and why is that? Because if you draw uh, the small signal model here, right? So that's R O P. That's R O N. You can you can see that the I D when you increase your V P. The for example, this is the A C signal, small V G S. When you increase the V G S, you get a larger current, which is I D over here. So that current cr flows through this resistor. It's going to generate a larger V L. So that's why v, VL, VP, they are in the same phase. All right, what about here? VM, when you have a little VGS here, right? When, v, when v, v, this VGS increase, you get a larger ID flow through this transistor from top to bottom, right? Like this. That's the ID. And this ID is going to be mirrored. To here, so it's gonna flow like this. It's the same ID, okay? So it's gonna flow in that way. But you can see that since this is the AC ground, if you draw the model over here, you're... so this ID flows from the top to the bottom, and it's gonna give you because it starts from the ground and it's gonna give you a negative VL. So that's why they are. Uh, so this VM has and VL they are not the same phase. So VM. V out, different phase. So that's why we know that uh, VM is uh, inverting terminal and VP is a non-inverting terminal, and this is V out. Uh, so that's the structure of the um, OPAMP, and if you want to know the details about how to derive all these AC gains, you can directly go to the April 13th lecture and watch the video and do the homework and uh, look at the notes. All right. So I don't know what page is this one now. And now I'm going to do some uh, simulation for you guys so you know how that works in, in the schematic in LD Spice. Okay.
So that's a schematic, and we already set up, we have set up all these parameters. Uh, so for the C5 technology, it doesn't like the one micron technology, you have the KP, the threshold voltage, and everything for you guys to calculate. It's pretty easy to calculate, and it's pretty consistent with uh, calculation and simulation uh, results. But the C5 technology doesn't have all these. Doesn't have the KP. You have to calculate the KP by yourself, and um, we are not going to do that. So the only thing you need to know is go to the model file and double click and open the C5. And but almost you can see that the threshold voltage is there is zero point six seven volts. So. You want to get a VDS set. You want to have your uh, current mirrors, all these cascading current mirrors being operated in the uh, saturation region. The best is a VDS set value because in that situation, you're getting a wider swing. And um, so how can you do that, right? So we have this already biased by all these parameters. And you can adjust this one and also this one to try to bias this cascading current mirror in a different uh, DC point, in a different uh, operation point. So for example, this one. So this is actually the, the one we have been working on. It's the same values we are using in the electric VI side. And now let's, let, let me just show you why this one works, okay? So we are doing a dollar P operation. So it's only show, showing current flow through these channels and also the DC voltage is at each node and we are going to see if this will work and we are giving a 2.5 volts to both of the VP and VM okay and uh, just trying to you know give them the DC voltage right now just to open up all these transistors and see what are these operating points are so if I do a, I run it and you are going to see this table just close it since we don't want to see all these numbers just want to use a mouse to point to the nodes we are interested in when I look at so the first thing you want to check is the current right so you want to show this little hand over here to point to the drain and when you are pointing to there you can see that at the bottom of the page I cannot I cannot uh, uh, move the mouse over to there but you can you should be able to see that it's at the bottom uh, of the page, it is uh, nineteen point one nine something microamps, so it shows up here, right? See, so something around twenty microamps, and now let's see here, twenty five. It's not really consistent, but you know, close in the twenties something. So there's twenty eight microamps, and here twenty eight, twenty eight. So totally, we are having about fifty six microamps for the tail current. So 56 microamps will flow, will be separated uh, evenly in these two branches if you have a, uh, identical DC voltages for these two gates. And right, what about here? So this is 10 times higher than that because I have 10 times wider devices. So it's a way higher current. So we, the higher current will give you a higher gain, right? So here's the... Uh, how these transistors are being biased and now let's take a look since we the the most concerned area is over here i want to know if all these animals are being biased right at the edge of the uh, saturation region since we we want to bias our uh, vds here and here uh, too high because if th these are too high the voltage here will be too high and you need a way larger vgs in order to turn on these two transistors and if this is too high, you need a higher VDS here as well. So your the the regions for AC swing will be a lot lower, right? So that's why we need this voltage to be as low as possible. Ideally, one VDS, one VDS. So ideally, this should be two. No, uh, one VDS set, one VDS set. So ideally, the VS this point voltage here should be two times of VS. Uh, VDS set, okay? And now let's take a look. This VGS is being biased at, let's get this one here. Um, 
way. So I can now make it smaller, resize it. No, it's not working. All right, never mind. So this one is 1.09 volts, right? Just remember that this is 1.09, and the Yeah, I think I can do this. Right? So here is 1.09. And this one is the same, right? 1.09. And VTH, VTH equals to what? 0 0.67 volts, right? Remember, we just opened up the model file. You can find this value in there. Uh, so this minus this is something around <clears throat> 0. Point, uh, so VDS equals to 0. Point, uh, 3342 volts. So that's VDS set, right? So we hope the voltage here will be a, a slightly larger than this or equal to this. So we can have uh, the smallest uh, VDS to make this transistor in, in operate in the saturation region. And now let's take a look. So this is 700 something millivolts. It's seven, 0 0.74 volts. So here right now is 0 0.74 volts. So it's a little bit further into the uh, uh, saturation region, not exactly right at the edge, which is fine. So this will probably give you a larger gain. It's not, exactly the same but it's not far away from that right and now let's take a look at this one see what's going to happen over there and because this vgs is two volts and no vg here is two volts so here is two volts so vgs here will be uh 1.26 volts vgs what about the voltage here? Now let's take a look. At the bottom, it's a 1.22 volts. So here is 1.22 volts. So what's the VDS over here? It's something around uh, 0 0.48, right? So that's a VDS set. What about here? This one minus the threshold voltage, the VDS set is 0 0.59. Uh, 0 0.59, right? And this is 0 0.48. So this is not re really being operated in the saturation, but it's super close, right? So you can see that for this transistor, it's being operated somewhere here probably okay it's close so we consider this is fine as well right uh, because finally you can see that the performance is probably is, uh, is not affecting the performance of the of the game over here at the output so it's close not it's not definitely it's not in the child it's close right it's close to the child and saturation so we consider this as a saturation as well so now you know that it's kind of working, okay? Uh, if you change this one, like what we have been using in our uh, in the lectures, which is we are trying to use a 10 to 10. So I just actually, is this 10? Yeah, this is 10, 10 to 300 nanometer time. Yeah, it's 10 to 10. If you do a 10 to 10, no, 10 to 10 uh, scale, now let's see what's going to happen. So when you are having a, a shorter lens, so which means the resistance will be lower, when the resistance here is lower, you are going to have a bit like a voltage divider, right? Lower resistance will have a lower voltage here. So lower voltage will lower the gate voltage over here, will open this up slightly lower and which may close this, turn this transistor off. But let's take a look. So the voltage here becomes 1.65. So what did we have? 
uh, not here, 1.65. So we used to have two volts, and now it is 1.65, and this is uh, this. So it's something, so the VGS is something around 1.2 volts, minus VTH is uh, one, wait, 1.65 minus this one will be 1.2 volts minus 0.67 volts is 0.59 volts, 0. about 500, about 600 millivolts, VDS set. So what about here? So this is actually larger than, than the VDS set, right? So 1.22 minus this is 700 millivolts, which is larger than that, than the, than the, than the previous one. And what about uh, this guy? 400 millivolts, which is lower than VDS set. What is this? 1.11 minus 0 0.67, which is about 500 millivolts. And this is right at the edge of the saturation as well. I don't know, this may work as well, but uh, you know, either way, we, uh, we can keep using this value, doesn't matter. I, I remember that the gain was not changing that much. So <clears throat> what's the effect of changing this one? Let's make it 100K. So you are decreasing the resistance for this biasing circuit, which means it's gonna having a larger current you can see the current right here, right now is uh, 19 micro amps. Oh, we haven't simulated it yet. Let's run it. And now let's check. So 37, so it's about, the current is just being doubled. 37 micro amps, uh, 46 micro amps, 50 micro amps, and 50, 50, 500. No, it's even more than that. And, um, so let's check. If we change the current, what about the operating points for these ones? That's 500 something millivolts, 1.2. So this is right at the saturation region, 1.11. Uh, about 500 millivolts overdrive voltage, and 1.9 minus this, um, minus this one. This is about one point. 4 volts minus VTH, which is about 800 millivolts, and this is 1.1 minus this. So this is in child. So that's why if you have a larger current, actually, your is driving this one into a child region, which is bad. So the way to save this guy is to increase the gate voltage over here by increasing the resistance. So now let's just double the resistance and run it. And I hope this will be better. So now let's see. 1.11, 800, so it's two, about uh, 200 millivolts. Oh no, this is even more in saturation. So the current is too, too high. We couldn't handle that. So let's come back to 200K and keep using this parameter. And this works fine. Um, <clears throat> and run it. Here's another thing. How can you verify if this op-amp is working? So we have been doing an op this open loop configuration. We didn't uh, connect the VL to the to VM, to the inverting terminal at all. We haven't done that yet, right? So you must be wondering, can we really uh, do a <clears throat> um, amplify a small signal, right? We're going to do this pretty soon. And now, before we move, forward with that one, what I want to do is I want to let you know how to simulate the gain, the open loop gain for this uh, configuration. So we won't do this up dot, up dot op simulation anymore, instead we are doing a DC sweep. So remember that it's just something like a comparator, right? So when you are changing your V in, you are getting an output change as well. So the gain is being measured at as the delta VT over delta V1. Okay, keep in mind, delta V out over delta V1. So that's the overall open loop gain. 
And now let's run it and you can probably get a better concept about this. Mm, this is not right, 0 to 5 volts. Yeah, this is, this is fine actually. And um, so we're sweeping this voltage. But I think what I should do is I should um, uh, 0 to 5 volts. And now let's take a look at this. Let's try to add a plot pane. I think this should be V1, it's not V1. 0 to 5 volts. All right. So this one, we want to add traces. So we hope this one to be delta, we just put a D there, delta VL over delta V in. Okay, delta VL over delta V in. And that's the, the, the peak. The point here will be the gain. And why is that? Because when you are changing your input from 0 to 5 volts, right? So the amplifier is amplifying the difference between these two inputs. So you are actually getting a either 0 or 5 volts for the output, right? When you are doing a time time uh, time domain analysis, but we are not doing a time domain analysis, we're just sweeping our uh, V in. And whenever it reaches that switching point, and the slope of that switching point will be the gain. So this is the gain. And you want to make sure you have the full range to show the lowest point of the peak over here. And another thing you need to know is, because there are so many points in here, uh, if you do not have enough points, for example, if you do not um, make a high resolution, you won't be able to see the peak because it won't plot that tip point. For example, if I do this, you can see right now that gain is something around, I don't know, like if you zoom in here, right, and move it to the top, it's about 700, 756 times amplification. But however, if you uh, do not do that, if you use a lower resolution and run it, it can, I guarantee you that the gain will be way lower. Uh, not this, this. Mm, run it, okay, and point to here, and you'll see it's going to be something around 400, because it's not able to pull, plot all the points at the tip, it just skip that and start plotting another number somewhere else, so this is what you want to know, you want to make it like at least what I used is like four or five numbers, zeros, to plot more points, you can see it's getting slower and slower because I'm having so many points to plot. And the family is going to arrive there and we'll see. So you have all these points being resolved. Right, but it doesn't have to be that accurate. Okay? You, can, you can find out it's, uh, the value is not changing anymore. Right? If you point to here, you can see that it's actually still 700 something it won't be higher it's already plotting the tip it's still 700 something so as long as this you are not losing any resolution which is fine okay so keep in mind um this is how that works and i remember what i used in the tutorial is not 0 to 5 it's 0 to 10. so if it's 0 to 10 um <clears throat> No, let's don't do that because too many points. Let's do 0 to 5. This is a my maximum voltage is 0 to 5. It's not making sense to do 0 to 10. And <clears throat> so that is the V in. And we want to check another point. Since you must be wondering what's happening to the VL. We, we're plotting the slope of the VL, but what's happening for VL? Let's, let's plot it. We can see that VL is like a comparator, right? So when VM is larger than something, when VM is larger than something, it's uh, pulling the VL to zero volts because it's a comparator, remember that? And uh, it's not changing 
without any time. This takes some time to change it, right? So that here is a slope. Here is how how that changes, and we are plotting all the slope, the slope at every point, right? So here has the highest slope. So which will be the which will be the, the open loop gain? You understand this? So that's V out, right? That's V out. And that's the open loop gain, which is the highest slope in this transition, during the transition from high to low. If you still remember how uh, we, we have been using a comparator in our car project, and uh, it's comparing the difference between these two terminals, right? And uh, when you are sweeping this from zero to five volts, this is keeping at 2.5 volts, at some point, Right, it's gonna, you know, turn on, turn off your uh, your uh, VL. You know, it's actually not only turn on, turn off. It has so many points. You just didn't see. You just couldn't see that. All right. So you zoom in, you can see the slope. But however, you know, we really we don't care about that because it's so steep, and we can directly ignore that because the open loop gain is so high. Okay. So that's how I understand the gain of this one. And now let's run a different simulation and verify if we can really amplify a small signal out of it. So uh, in that case, we need a time domain analysis. And I'm going to comment out this one. And I will do this. And I will do this in order to plot all the points. Because if you don't do that, they are going to skip points and your curve looks weird. So we are doing a 10 milliseconds transient analysis, time domain analysis, and we need uh, this one. So now let's do it, okay? Now let's do, just do a schematic and show you the circuit we wanna do. I think I've saved this, right? So now let's start a new page. So what I'm gonna do is I will do this, very simple one. Right? Plus, that's minus, and make the feedback. And I will add a resistor here, actually, and another resistor. And I have a DC voltage, DC voltage uh, on both sides, because this is not a, yeah, uh, no. I need to lift signal here to 2.5 volts. And I also need a AC signal here as well. So I need a sine wave. All right. So this is a sine wave. Uh, let's do a one millivolt. And this is 2.5 volts as well to match this one. And this is 1K, this is 5K. And we are going to probe V out. And we expect V out will be uh, five times larger than uh, your this V in, and at the same time, they are out of phase, which means V in is something like this, right? And V out will be uh, something like this, five times larger and out of phase, okay? And now let's try it, see if that works. So given that this is your V in, this is your uh, VM, this is V P, this is V out, and we need a resistor as a feedback resistor connect to here and feed it back. So this will be VM. Let's call it VM. You want to make directly connected to the to VM, so it looks probably looks better. Now let's do it. Feed it back to VM, all right? And this is 5K. And um, this one should be a sine wave, go to advanced, sine wave is 2.5 DC offsite and one millivolt and one K Hertz. And um, this is 2.5 volts as a vol reference voltage to lift your signal and to match with this one. So I think we need we need a 
uh, gain resistor has here as well, right? So wanna you wanna move the whole thing here? Huh? No idea. That. So if I move it to here and add a resistor here as a gain resistor, which is one k. <clears throat> And uh, I think we are pretty much ready. This is a 1K and we are simulating for 10 milliseconds. Uh, we are hoping we are getting uh, 10 periods of the sound wave signal. And that's the output, right? Not, this is not a, this is a feedback loop. This is the final output. Now let's run it. And uh, I will probe the input first. So that's the input, right? And we'll delete this pin. We're not using that plot pin anymore. So V out. Let's take a look at the V out. So V in, V out. There is slightly a uh, off site because we don't have an infinite uh, open loop gain. So that's why I can see the DC offset is being amplified as well. It's not, they are not having the exactly the same uh, DC voltage. Level DC offsite, but the thing is, we can measure the difference between this uh, between the uh, AC voltages, right? So now let's see that here's the V in V in. This is about uh, two millivolts, right? Two millivolts and V out. It should be 10 times, should be a uh, five times, should be 10 millivolts. 10 millivolts. So we are amplifying our signal by five times. So this is right. Another thing to verify. Okay, keeping remember that if you have an infinite open loop gain, your uh, this voltage can be transferred to here, so which means if you have something like this, that's the first test. Test one. All right now, let's do a test two. Um, very simple one. If you have a Nikki feedback. Right, so this is a forty forty four, and if we didn't do any, we don't do anything. Just directly connect the two point five eight DC voltage over here, and this one will be these will be two point five as well. Right, remember that. Now let's verify it. See if that works. Delete, 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 and no resistors, no gain, but only a line being shorted to here. And the feedback is still, you need the feedback from here to here. And we do not connect anything to this point, right? This is just the inverting terminal. And this is the voltage follower. And now let's run, run what? Let's run the operating point instead of this. Right click, hold the script and click cancel. It's gonna give you this multi-line editing option. Let's common out all these ones but just do a dot op operation and run and close this table and now let's come back here and see if this is 2.5 volts just look this area guys okay, 2.49 something volts right so this is magically sending this biasing signal to here but you can see it's not exactly 2.5 volts that's why this difference is being amplified because this is a differential amplifier it's amplifying the difference uh, not only AC difference, but also the DC difference between these two inputs to the output. Okay, so because this one is being fed, fed back to the uh, VM from the output, so you know that the output also has a, a DC offside, which is 2.5 volts. That's why your AC signal is going to swing around this 2.5 volts uh, reference voltage because they have a 0 to 5 real to real. Uh, real to real uh, voltage range and 2.5 is actually perfect. So have a, a wide swing, uh, swing range. And you can think about now everything makes sense, make it perfect, perfect sense. Because the DC voltage over here is 2.8 volts, and we are hoping um, the it's, it's biasing these two these two transistors at the at the same voltages as well. But the thing is because this one is being fed back, uh, so it's getting uh, 2.5 volts over here as well. It used to be the same voltage as this uh, drain here because they are the, exactly the same symmetric uh, uh, voltage, uh, same symmetric uh, current, current mirrors. 
So this one used to have the same VDS stat. But the thing is, uh, it's being moved from the VDS set to where? So for that gain, gain state resistor, right? It used to be here before we apply 2.5 volts. It used to be here. It's being biased something around here. That's the purpose you adjust your pass coding wide swing current meter, right? You want to bias it over here. After you add the 2.5 volts DC offside, and here's VDD, right? And you are getting a whole range to swing your signals. That's why, that's why we would like to use this configuration. We we want to bias our uh, current meters, cast coding current meters, by just one time VDSI, another time of VDSI to make this point to be as small as possible. Okay. So when you are swinging your signal around 2.5 volts, it is able to reach it is able to reach this point this voltage and still keeping your transistor being saturated right so it's not like ah swing over here is already child your transistor it's not you have a wide swing range this is why you need all these preparations in last week we uh, changed all these cast coding configuration structures to make this work. Is that making sense? Hopefully it is. And if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email and I'm gonna create uh, another tutorial just run you through all these layout steps. Um, so, because this is uh, it's not easy, it takes time. All right, see you in the next video.